The following is a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society. Welcome again to Grace in Focus from the Grace Evangelical Society. You are so welcome here. Glad to have you. To be born again for eternal salvation, a person must believe in Jesus. What does this exactly mean? How much do you have to believe? And how precisely does your belief have to be? Well, Dave Renfro and Bob Wilkin will be along in just a second to address this question. And stay tuned. I think you'll find it helpful. Right before they come to the microphones, let me mention our website, faithalone.org. It is the place to access everything about the Grace Evangelical Society. Lots of resources and books and blogs and articles regarding free grace theology that you can find there. And I also want to mention the Grace Evangelical Society's annual National Conference 2023 coming up May 22nd through the 25th. There is still time, I believe, to get information and get registered, and you'll find that information at faithalone.org. Here is Bob Wilkin with a descriptive word about that conference. The teaching that we get at the annual conference for Grace Evangelical Society is so meaningful to me. I'm always encouraged to hear pastors and theologians and missionaries who are talking about the scriptures and talking about their walk with Christ. I'm always moved when I hear these messages. Thank you, Bob Wilkin and friend. Go to faithalone.org to get information about our national conference, May the 22nd through the 25th. Now here are the gentlemen with today's discussion. This question is from Grant. Grant asked, do we have to believe precisely who Jesus is to be saved? Interesting question. Yeah, and he goes on in his question, and he basically says, don't we have to define Jesus? Because if we believe in a Jesus that we also believe has sinned or has lied or isn't God, then we don't believe in the Jesus of Scripture. You've heard this one before, haven't you, David? I mean, that we need to know all of the essential details about Jesus. Mm -hmm. The question I have for people is, okay, where do you draw the line? Let's say you say that Jesus never sinned. Well, in my opinion, which I'm in an extreme minority here, impeccability means Jesus couldn't sin. Do we have to believe that he was unable to sin? Most people would say no, because they don't believe that. And what if people think he sinned? Or do we need to believe that in the miracles he did? Do we need to believe he walked on water? Do we need to believe he raised people from the dead? Mm -hmm. Do we need to believe he was born of a virgin? Most people would say, no, you don't have to believe he was born of a virgin. I'm not sure why they say you don't have to believe that, but you do have to believe that he's the second member of the Trinity. Well, how could he be the second member of the Trinity and been born of a normal birth where he inherits a sin nature from his father. Right. That I mean, that wouldn't make sense, That would it? makes absolutely no sense. And so my answer would be that the more we understand about who Jesus is, the easier it is for us to believe in him for what he promises, which is in John 3, 16, we'll never perish, but we have everlasting life if we believe in him. Mm-hmm. But you can believe all kinds of truths about Jesus and yet believe in work salvation sure, or believe in lordship salvation and believe that it's not enough to simply be convinced that Jesus guarantees my eternal destiny based on what he has done, that he's paid the penalty for our sins. He's removed the sin barrier so that by believing him, we have eternal life. And my response would be, If you're going to say you've got to believe everything about Jesus, then nobody would be saved. Right. If you say you've got to believe all the essentials, then who's going to decide what all the essentials are? I mean, why wouldn't it include the virgin birth? Why wouldn't it include not only his bodily resurrection, but on the third day? Right. Right. You'd have to get into all kinds of details. You'd have to say, ultimately, he'd have to be born in Bethlehem. That and also the significance of all of those things that you just said. It's almost like there's certain theologians that pretty much say in order to become a Christian, you have to be an advanced theologian to believe all these doctrines to receive the gift of everlasting life. And I think Jesus, to me, this is an argument for the free grace that Jesus is talking to people that are not 
read the Gospel of John. The people that he talked to were not highly educated. Right. And so he's not going to go into this incredibly complex doctrinal thing about how do you get to heaven. He made it simple. Believe that I can give you everlasting life. And, yes, sir. It's a yes, and it's a simple yes or no requested answer, you and, know? And here's a simple way of looking at it. Did the apostles, before Jesus rose from the dead, did they know he was God in the flesh? I, at least some of them did, <laughs> yeah. Okay, who? Who knew he was God in the flesh? I think after seeing all the, the miracles that he did, there was something really special about this guy, Jesus. Right, sure. And if I was there, I'm looking at that miracle, and that proves the other things that he says. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. So I'm looking at what he does, and that verifies what he says. Okay, and I'm with you that maybe there were people who believed in the Trinity during Jesus' lifetime. Mm -hmm. But I'm doubtful because remember when they're in the boat and Jesus stills the storm and stills the waves and the wind. And he says, who is this that even the wind and the waves obey him? And it's not till John 20, 28 that Thomas says, my Lord and my God. Right. That's the first reference to the deity of Christ we have in the Gospels. Right. Now, of course, they knew he was the son of man and they knew he was the son of God, but they didn't understand son of man and son of God to be statements of deity. No, they didn't. I don't think they understood also that he was the Yahweh of the Old Testament. Well, how many believers in the church today believe Jesus is the Yahweh of the Old Testament? Right. There's not that many. (laughs) Obviously, there are some passages in the Old Testament where Yahweh occurs in the New Testament, quotes it, and says that's talking about Jesus. Right. All right, I got one for you. Read Matthew 16, if you would, for us, verses 21 through 23. Let's see what the disciples believed before Jesus went to the cross. Verse 21? Yeah, starting in 21, going to 23 of chapter 16. Okay, it says here, from that time... Jesus began to show to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised on the third day. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, that this should happen to you. But he, capital H, he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan, You are an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. Okay, now, when Jesus says, I'm going to the cross, does Peter say amen? (laughs) Not hardly. Not even close. So, if we have to believe all of the essential truths about Jesus, wouldn't one of them be that he died on the cross for our sins? Mm -hmm. Yet, these people were born again before they believed that, and they're held up in the Gospel of John as examples of people who are born again in the church age Mm -hmm. and how anybody can be born again, the same way Nicodemus was born again, the Mm -hmm. woman at the well, the disciples. Right. And so as a result, I think what we have to say is people don't always have complete clarity. Quick example. You and I both took a course called Christology in seminary. What's that? What's Christology? It's the study of the nature and works of Christ. So when we took that thing, were we ready to get a passing grade on the final exam without taking the course? Um, That would have been a difficult thing for me. Maybe you could do that. No, I would have failed. The question is, are we saying people have to be able to pass a seminary-level course on Christology to be born again? Yeah. Some theologians would probably say yes. Yeah, they probably would. By the way, I spoke at a church in Starkville, Mississippi, and afterwards we were talking about this issue, and a young man came up and said to the pastor, whose name was also Bob, he said, Pastor Bob, I came to faith in this church while I was a student at Mississippi State, I believed in Jesus for my salvation, that I was saved once and for all simply by faith in him, and I believed he was the son of God. And the pastor goes, amen, that's right. And he said, but I believed he was the son of God. Mm -hmm. I didn't believe he was God. I thought God had a son with a human woman and that he was the son of God. Right. And he said, only after I sat under your teaching for a while did I realize 
that that didn't mean God had a literal son, Mm -hmm. that this spoke of his relationship with the father, his intimacy with the father and with the spirit. Right. And so he was like, but I didn't get that at the beginning. No. How many people believe Jesus is the son of God and they're literally thinking in a Mormon sense that he's actually God's son? You know why that's going on? Why? Because we're not teaching the right stuff in our churches. There you go. There's so many churches that are not teaching verse by verse, what we call expository, and therefore they don't go into the issue. What does it mean for Jesus to be the Son of God? That's right. Now, by the way, I will say I've mentioned this to people, and I've had them say, but Jesus is the Son of God. And I'll say, well, he is the Son of God properly understood, Well, but he's not the Son of God in the same way I'm the Son of my Father. What did God's voice say when Jesus was baptized? You are my beloved Son, Son. and I am well pleased. And and that was a quote from Psalm 2, and Psalm 2 is a psalm of coronation. In other words, I believe that Jesus was baptized into his kingship, and that's what it means for him to be the son. That's what Craig Glickman said at Dallas Seminary when I took him for eschatology. He said, every Judean king, they read that psalm, Uh and they said, you are my son, today I have begotten thee for Solomon, and they said it for all of the Judean kings. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. Because Jesus is the ultimate Son of God. Right. He, But these other people were, like, remember in the uh, Davidic covenant, your son will be my son? Right. Yeah. And so son doesn't mean begotten in a physical sense. No, it means begotten in a spiritual sense. Exactly. Yeah. Well, think about it. We may have just (laughs) everybody's minds, but in the meantime, what are we going to do? Keep Keep grace grace in in focus. focus. Zane Hodge's commentary on James, entitled The Epistle of James, Proven Character Through Testing, is available at discount to Grace and Focus listeners right now at faithalone.org. Get half price through April the 30th, 2023, when you use the discount code word JAMES. That's faithalone.org. Would you like to deepen your understanding of Scripture and the Christian life? Well, a great place to start is our website, It's faithalone.org. That's faithalone.org. We've got all kinds of free materials on the site available for you. One of those which is extremely popular is our magazine, Grace in Focus. It comes out six times a year. It's full color, easy to read, and people are really growing who read it. So stop by and get a free subscription at faithalone.org. We would like to thank all of our financial partners who help us keep this show going. All gifts are tax deductible and very much appreciated. If you'd like to find out how you can be a financial partner, visit us at faithalone.org. We are so happy when we hear from listeners. Maybe you've got a question or comment or feedback. If so, please send us a message. Here's our email address. It's radio at faithalone.org. That's radio at faithalone.org. On the next Grace in Focus, will we get to see our loved ones again? Will we know, will we be aware of who they are in heaven? That's on the next episode of Grace in Focus. This is the Grace Evangelical Society reminding you to always keep grace in focus. The proceeding has been a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society.